Good morning, folks. My name's Joe Patterson. Thanks for stopping by my YouTube channel. A visit this morning about sin. And uh, it's a humbling, very humbling thing um, to visit about because uh, all of us have fallen short of the glory of God. All of us um, have make mistakes and uh, some of us pick those things that Christ Jesus freed us from. We pick those things up again. Over and over, and sometimes for many years, continue to pick up the things that we ask God to free us from, and He does, and we just pick it up again and again. So, I want to visit about sin and about the effects of it, and then I want to talk about the mercy of the Lord. Having a cup of coffee, and you're welcome to do the same. Tea, whatever it is you drink, if you want something. Just take our time with this. I'd like to read, I believe it's in Romans here. Um, I believe it's Romans uh, chapter 1, verse 18. We'll just start there. The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all godlessness and wickedness. Now, I am reading from the New International Version. A lot of people don't like it, and, and let's, let's really not get into a conversation about versions. <laughs> I have the King James Version, the Old King, the New King, the, you know, American Standard. I mean, all kinds of Bibles, and so I just happen to read for this. <laughs> the wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all godlessness and wickedness of men who, who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Since what may be known about God is plain to them, because God has made it plain to them. And then he talks about, since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature has been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, so that men are without excuse. <laughs> um, the scripture is going to be warning us constantly by the Holy Spirit against sin. <clears throat> And uh, I really pray with all my heart that this will bring some humility in you. We were talking about shame the other day. Shame. People don't understand that shame has a job. It does a job. <laughs> the scripture talks about brethren who claim to be brothers but uh, continue to live sinfully. And the scripture tells us by the Holy Spirit that with people, such people like that, we, we don't fellowship. You, uh, yet, he said, don't treat them like an enemy, but don't fellowship. That shame, they might be ashamed of what they've done. Um, shame, shame does a job. And usually shame comes when you've done something wrong. So shame is doing a job. It's not a bad thing. It's not an awful thing. Um, Shame, again, is assigned to you when you do wrong. Let's talk about what wrong is. Let's go to chapter, I'm sorry, verse 29 of Romans chapter 1. They have become filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, greed, depravity, They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, and malice. They are gossips and slanderers, God-haters, insolent, arrogant, boastful. They invent ways of doing evil. They disobey their parents. They are senseless, faithless, heartless, ruthless although they know God's righteous decree that those who do such things deserve death they not only continue to do these very things but also approve of those who practice them <laughs> we're constantly being warned against these sinful things always trying to keep us on a path 
that pleases God is the Holy Spirit doing. <clears throat> what sin does when we sin, and I'm talking about sins that lead to death, there are plenty of people I don't think that know that there are sins that do not lead to death. Most people don't even know that. They, they think all sins lead to death. They've been taught that all sins are the same, that every sin uh, leads to death, that if you sin at all, you know, they can uh, lead you to death, that you confess all your sins. And then people talk about the blood of Jesus covering you because there's sins that we do we don't even know. And so I'm not talking about those kinds of sins today. <laughs> If you murder somebody, uh, take a gun and shoot somebody and kill them and you murder them, surely you know that that's a sin. If you take something that doesn't belong to you from somebody's home or purse or billfold, surely you know that that is a sin. If you are married and you sleep with your neighbor's wife or your best friend's wife, and cheat on your own wife and defile your neighbor's or your best friend's bed, surely you know that is a sin. So we're not talking about sins that you accidentally do that don't you don't even know about. We're not talking about that kind of foolishness. And I say it's foolishness because <laughs> we're talking about sins that you have control over. God has given you control over those sins I just talked about. When you continue to do those kinds of sins, lusting, um, looking uh, online for uh, pleasures, um, pornography, or um, whatever it might be, when you continue on trying to gratify the desires of the flesh, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes, these kinds of sins will cause your relationship with God to suffer greatly. So it's like taking a really, really sharp, wonderful knife and spinning a wheel of, of granite or, uh, you know, whatever the sharpener is <laughs> made of, and then just taking the edge and going crossways and just, and just dulling it. You're just dulling a sharp edge when you sin. You dull your relationship with God becomes dull. Your relationship with your brothers and sisters in Christ becomes dull. Your light begins to dim. Your zeal for God begins to decrease. All of these things are death moving in. When you walk faithful to God and upright and you put sin under, you let your sin nature die, your carnal mind, be put to death and you practice those things that are godly. Those things that lead to life. <laughs> you stay then sharp. Full of zeal. Full of oil, if you will. The five wise virgins and the five foolish virgins. Your lamp is full. Because your relationship blesses God and he blesses you with a strong, vibrant relationship with God that is dependent on Christ and the power of God that you're overcoming evil by doing good. Anyway, you know when you've been sinning. Um, all of us do. So it is blessed to cry out to God and ask God for forgiveness and for the gift of repentance that you might turn away from your evil behavior that your relationship with God can be restored anyway let's talk about that real quick Paul's talking to them here and, and again in Romans we just start reading chapter 2 verse 1 he's talking I just read to you guys about the things that God said are known just through the nature of things <laughs> he says you therefore have no excuse 
You who pass judgment on someone else. Now this is to all of us, myself included. You who pass judgment on someone else. At whatever point you judge the other, you are condemning yourself. Because you who pass judgment do the same things. So if you pass judgment on someone who's gossiping, do you gossip? If you pass judgment on someone who is sexually immoral, are you sexually immoral? We have to be so careful that we are walking with God in faithfulness. That we are being faithful to hear the teachings of Christ and putting them into practice. So that we can see clearly to help someone else. Usually we lack in love when we're judging other people. We learn to make a right judgment through love. So let's keep reading. Now we know that God's judgment against those who do such things is based on truth. So when you, a mere man, pass judgment on them and yet do the same things, do you think that you will escape God's judgment? Or do you show contempt for the riches of his kindness and tolerance and patience, not realizing that God's kindness leads you toward repentance? But because, he says, of your stubborn hearts and your unrepentant heart. I will tell you, uh, I have been stubborn before. Oh gosh, what a terrible thing. Stubborn and unrepentant. In other words, not willing to, to change. Um, I praise God that it didn't last long. But it certainly has been a part in my life before. It is a miserable place, a miserable state. Because of your stubbornness and your unrepentant heart, you are storing up wrath against yourself for the day of God's wrath, when his righteous judgment will be revealed. God will give to each person according to what he has done. To those who by persistence in doing good seek glory, honor, and immortality, he will give eternal life. But for those who are self-seeking, who reject the truth and follow evil, there will be wrath and anger. There will be trouble and distress for every human being who does evil, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile. For God does not show favoritism. This is a pure fact. Let's talk about those sins that lead to death. In Galatians chapter uh, 5 verse around 19 the Holy Spirit has the writer write down the acts of the sinful nature that are obvious sexual immorality sexual immorality is a, a big word covers a lot of ground not everyone expounds upon it <laughs> just getting some understanding on it um, basically lust you're lusting after pleasure sexually uh, to please yourself you maybe behave lewdly uh, where you expose yourself uh, and shouldn't uh, not long back and probably still there was a thing called sexting where you actually take pictures of your private areas and uh, share them with people uh, that would be that would be sexually immoral some of you are fornicators. You're not married and you're having sexual relations with the people you're not married to. That would be sexually immoral. Uh, some of you are adulterous. You're committing adultery. Um, maybe you're lusting in your mind, fleshly, about uh, whomever. Uh, sexually. That would be sexually immoral. Um, there are plenty of things that are sexually immoral. You have to cry out to God and uh, learn uh, from God what is displeasing to him. There are plenty of people who are married and they do behave in passionate lust like the heathen. That is sexually immoral. So anyway, there's a, a lot of, of ground there and I would encourage you to cry out to God with a pure heart and ask God to teach you what is immoral uh, to him sexually that you might please him uh, to not offend and, and defile the temple of God, which is us. So, sexually immoral. 
uh, immorality, impurity. So these are words that can describe many things, but impurity, whatever might uh, be impure, uh, impure thinking, uh, impure uh, behavior, where you maybe behave inappropriately, maybe at a gathering or party, you may have coarse jesting involved or whatever, you know. That's just, again, something to ponder. Debauchery. Idolatry. A big, again, big word, cover a lot of ground. Um, it's important that we seek God as hidden treasure. It's important that you learn what these things are. These are sins that lead to death eternal. Destruction. These are things that will destroy your relationship with God. Witchcraft, hatred. Witchcraft, manipulation, passive-aggressive. Um, there's all kinds of forms of witchcraft and witchery. Hatred. Mm. A lot of hatred when you get angry. And we hate. We hate and we speak terrible things and, and, and say awful things. Uh, discord, showing discord. If you, you know, maybe you want to look the definition of some of these names up, I would highly encourage it. Jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, like cliques, forming cliques, factions. You know, oh, churches are loaded with factions. These are sins that lead to death. Envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. The Apostle Paul then warns us. He says, I warn you as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against people like that, there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature, the old man. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. The one who sows to please his sinful nature, from that nature he will reap destruction. But the one who sows to please the Spirit, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. This is what the Apostle is trying to say by the Holy Spirit. It's what the Holy Spirit is leading us to understand. Let us do good to all people, especially those who are of the faith. If we ignore the teachings of God, if we ignore the leadings of the Holy Spirit, it brings death and we feel it. We feel that separation from God. We feel that death uh, moving in on us. We feel dull, almost numb, because sin is alive in us when we behave wrongly. This is why it's so important to let the sinful man die and take on the spirit that gives life. Become the new creation. Let God finish the work he started in you. Stop kicking against the goads of life. Start to believe that the power of God is enough for you to overcome sin. You don't have to go on sinning. The scripture would warn us by the Holy Spirit that anyone who loves God cannot go on sinning. You just can't go on sinning. We've got to stop. Stop lusting. Stop gossiping. Stop being involved in godless chatter. The Holy Spirit says those who indulge 
and godless chatter become more and more ungodly. We've got to learn to gather with people of like faith. Light hath no fellowship with darkness. What good is it to hang out with people who don't know God? To call that your fellowship, to call that your, 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 your circle, your peeps, so to speak. They will take you down with them. God has called us to gather with people who are believing. Let the wise walk with the wise. Fools are the ones that gather with the godless to their own hurt. <laughs> anyway, I hope and pray you can hear this. If you're sinning, any of those sins that we just read, <clears throat> and there's so much that we've got to, that's why we got to be guided by the Holy Ghost. Because it says in there that they invent new ways to sin. New ways. Wow. <clears throat> that's pretty, pretty evil and wicked of us when we do such things. So let's repent. Let's believe together in Christ Jesus that God has given us everything we need to live a life of godliness. He has promised us that there will be no temptation ever come to us that we cannot overcome. He promises that we can bear it. And he'll always provide the way out. This is the word of the Holy Spirit through the scripture. He'll always provide the way out. Never let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. It will never be his fault. This is why when we sin, we just dull the sharp edge. Our relationship, our soul is not at peace. It hurts our prayer. We get to where we don't want to pray. You can't hardly speak an encouraging word to anyone. You're usually filled with argument and dissension because you've been sinning. So anyway, the question is, do you want to stop sinning? I pray right now if you do, let's pray together. Father God, thank you so much for your glorious Son, Jesus. Thank you for what he has done. Help us through a revelation, God, understand the magnitude of what you've given us in Christ Jesus, that we can believe, that we can overcome sin through Christ Jesus, that we can become a new creation and walk in newness of life, walk in the Spirit, keep in step with the Holy Spirit, letting the sin nature die, utterly put to death, that sinful nature. Help us, God, to be controlled by the Holy Spirit, to be self-controlled and self-disciplined. Let the fruit of the Holy Spirit be in us. Let it thrive, God Almighty, let it thrive and root deeply in good soil. Help us, God, to let go of every wicked thing that would take us to the destruction Make a right relationship in us with you, Lord. Let us be restored and made new. So many times that we have sinned against you, so many times, God, that we have done the same thing over and over and said we'd never do it again and did. I pray, God, right now, that pattern be broke in Jesus' name. Let freedom come. Let righteousness reign in our heart now. Praise you, Lord God, in Christ Jesus' glorious name. Amen. Thank you for tuning in.